Hi everybody, we're going to talk about biotechnology. We have left the world of cell biology and all of the organelles and we're into another unit called biotechnology. What do we mean by bio? The prefix bio comes from ancient Greek. It means life. Can you think of another word that begins with bio? Hopefully you said biology, which is the study of living things and the name of our course. Sometimes it's called living environment. Biotechnology is using something living to create a better product. There are ancient methods of doing this and there are newer methods of doing this. And right now we're going to talk about those ancient methods and later on in the week you'll talk about the new methods. This ancient method is called selective breeding. Humans select the best quality in an organism and have that organism reproduce. So select is just choosing the traits in an organism and then having that organism breed or reproduce and make more of itself. Selective breeding, if you want a traditional definition, is a process that has been used for thousands of years to produce new varieties of animals and plants. And we're going to give you some examples of that. So we have selective breeding in plants, and we're going to use corn as our example. And so corn today probably looks like this, modern corn, but it didn't always look like that. Some days long, long ago, it looked kind of like that. So how did we get from one place to another? Um, as you know, corn has, corn has been produced and grown in Mexico for centuries and, of course, in Egypt for, for many, many, many um, centuries. So we have a lot of history of, of growing corn in, um, in agriculture as humans. So here's how to produce wonderful corn. Here are some very early corn cobs. Now our corn today doesn't look like this, it doesn't look like this, and it doesn't look like this. So what we did was here's how corn grows in a cornfield. This is a stalk of corn. Each of these little guys up here is one stalk of corn, and each corn stalk will produce one ear of corn. And here you can see the ear of corn on the corn stalk. Um, here's the corn is still in its husk, and this is the corn still in its husk. You can see them still in their husk, and this is with the husk sort of pulled back and pulled away, and you can see. And if I were a farmer, I would look at these three, and I would say, oh, I really like this one, how it's in nice rows, and this one is in nice rows, but then it gets kind of jagged over here. And, you know, people don't like this. They, they want nice, even rows, and they want it to look really beautiful when they eat it. So I might take this corn uh, this ear of corn and take its kernels to reproduce more corn rather than to take these kernels and reproduce more corn from those. And you can see that if this is produced it's going to give us more value at the market and maybe I would make more money as, in the, as a farmer. And so this is how we get these beautiful rows of corn ears of corn with you know nice rows and the beautiful color we just continually select the traits in an organism in the organism in this case is corn and we reproduce just uh, what we want so another example in plants is this idea that wild mustard this is a wild mustard plant and by just selecting specific traits we get cauliflower or broccoli or cabbage kale and kohlrabi. So what about animals? We're going to give you a couple different examples about animals. We're going to do dogs, horses, and then finally cattle. So dogs, from ancient to modern times, dogs have provided companionship, security, hunting with their keen sense of smell, sheep herding, and guidance over unfamiliar terrain. And today there are more than 400 breeds of dogs as a result of selective breeding by humans. So dogs didn't all start out looking like this little cute guy or that little cute wonderful guy or this guy. They all started out as wolves and humans would select the traits of a pack of little uh, wolves and they would breed that trait. They would take let's say they wanted a nice calm dog so they would take the calmest little cub of a litter and they would breed it with another litter over here that with a nice calm little cub and they would get nice calm little um, wolves so eventually they would breed all of these traits the color of the fur 
the um, shape of their ears, all of these things were bred into dogs in, in 400, uh, 400 breeds of dogs over, over 10,000 years of of evolution. Sometimes this is called artificial selection because we're artificially, artificial means sort of in a fake way, selecting the qualities or traits of an organism rather than allowing nature to select the traits. Second example is horses and as you probably know horses have provided a means of travel and transportation of heavy loads. So here's an uh, ancient ruin with horses in it carrying things and some horses need to be strong and some need to be fast and so how do we get a strong horse versus a very fast horse and the way we do it is we selectively breed horses and we still do this today it's a huge money-making industry and you can see this horse is bred because it's probably got these amazing muscles it's probably got a bone structure that lends itself to being super fast, winning races, and making people lots of money. So our third example is cattle, and with cattle uh, we have, this is a milking plant, and so all the cows are being milked, and this chart has fewer cows produce more milk, and what they've done is they've bred cows so that in 1944 it would take five cows, one, two, three, four, five cows to produce, let's say, this much milk. And today, or in 2009, it only takes two cows and they can produce one and a half times as much. So we have three less cows producing 50% more or actually 63% more milk. And you can imagine that if you were a farmer and you had to take care of only two cows, it would be a lot less expensive than if you had a farm and you had to take care of five cows. They would need more space, they would need more food, and these guys need less space, less food, and they can produce just as much so that the farmer gets to make a lot more money. Okay, I'm going to show you a short video of some cows and what's happened over time with these cows and how they've been bred. So this is an English Longhorn and the English Longhorn is one of the oldest breeds in the world. It was first bred purely for beef. This guy is called a Highland cow. He's in uh, Scotland and I just want to show you, you can see that he's got his fur and he's very different. He can withstand really cold climates. The next cow we have is called a Glock Gloucester horse. He's a dairy breed and this is where your cheese comes from. So he's bred primarily to make cheese. This one is called an Aberdeen Angus and this is where we get our meat. This one is called a South Devon. He's one of the largest British breeds and finally this one is called a Harrowford. He's one of the most adaptable and most widespread of all cattle and these cattle all looked super different. They're all bred for different things. Okay, thank you. That's it.